Mm -hmm. Mr. Haynes? Here. Mr. Sauer? Here. Mr. Roach? Here. Mr. Bauer? Here. Mayor May. Here we have a phone present and we have a special meeting tonight and we have the regular meeting on the um, next Monday. Items are restricted to the agenda, but we left some um, some wiggle room with some items that some folks want, so we've got those listed. So, first item is discussion item that deals with Humane Society, the teeth and all of this. Gotcha. Uh, citizen comments can be taken on this item, only on this item. So, do any citizen comments on, on the agenda items? Okay, um, who's going to make the presentation on the yeah, uh, city solicitor? Uh, Mayor, I'm going to do so with the assistance of the representatives of the Humane Society, and if they would introduce themselves. Hi, Sam Marcus, board president. Linda Thomas, city rep. And I'm Gay Broadwater, the TNR coordinator. Okay. Uh, what, do you, what, rep? what do you say, city rep? Yeah. Okay. I belong to you all. Uh oh. <laughs> and Broadwater. <clears throat> May I proceed, Mayor? Go ahead, please. Okay. I'm sorry. Uh, last fall, uh, there was a substantial amount of, of uh, discussion before the City Commission concerning the implementation of a trap, neuter, and release program to address uh, uh, problems with a number of, uh, of stray cats that are located uh, primarily in downtown Frankfurt, although I suppose it's throughout the city of Frankfurt and the uh, 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 significant amount of research was done to see whether or not a trap, neuter, and release program has been effective in other cities where uh, stray cats are, are uh, uh, captured and they are uh, looked at to determine whether they're healthy or sick. If they're healthy, then uh, they are uh, neutered, they are uh, or spayed, I'm not sure what it is for a cat, but anyway, then their ear is clipped and then they are brought back and released into the community. And the reason why you do that is uh, if you take a cat <coughs> out, of, out of his surrounding <coughs> and don't reintroduce it back into the surroundings, then the cats that, are, that remain there seem to uh, procreate at a higher rate and they produce more cats. Whereas if you bring the cat back in after it's been uh, uh, neutered, then in that case uh, the number of cats eventually declines. And it does take several years to see the decline. But in any event, I, I drafted a, a five-year pilot program for the Commission to consider. Uh, the Humane Society would be authorized to develop and implement a, a program to trap, neuter, and release the uh, feral cats after sterilization, uh, vaccination against the threat of rabies, and other diseases that's determined to be necessary. Now, when the Humane Society uh, uh, look, examines the cats, if they see a cat that uh, is inappropriate to release back into uh, its former environment, then it will, in some cases, it'll put the cat down if it's, if it's not healthy enough uh, and it can't be brought back or it, it would be inappropriate to reintroduce that cat back into the community. Anyway, the cats are ear tip for identification. The main society is to maintain records uh, to determine whether the pilot program is effective and they are to provide a written report to the city concerning the pilot program every six months. Uh, again, the Humane Society is authorized to euthanize feral cats that due to poor health or other reasons as determined by the Humane Society should not be released back into the environment. And again, the pilot program would automatically expire uh, five years from the date it goes into effect unless its uh, existence is continued by the uh, commission or if for some reason the commission finds it to be entirely ineffective or, or if there's another way to uh, address the cat issue. Uh, discovered within the next several years and you all want to kind of change focus. So anyway, uh, that's the trap, neuter, and, and release program. 
the ordinance that was provided to you for review provides a, a pickup fee of $25 for altered animals and a pickup fee of $75 for altered animals. The Humane Society would like to change those figures to uh, $30 for altered animals and $80 for unaltered animals. However, to kind of offset that, uh, the commission may recall that uh, in 2014, there was a, uh, an ordinance passed which amended the uh, licensing fees for cats. And we had different fees based upon whether cats were and dogs were, were spayed and with or without microchip. Uh, and the Humane Society has done kind of a survey of surrounding, community, surrounding communities and they would like to simplify that process and what they would like to do is they would just like to have a simple $10 license fee for unaltered animals uh, and uh, a fee of $40 for, excuse me, $10 for altered animals and $40 for unaltered animals. So if, if these things are uh, acceptable to the commission, then what I would do is I would uh, revise the, uh, the trap neuter release uh, ordinance to change the pickup fee from $25 for altered animals to $30 uh, and a pickup fee of $75 for unaltered animals would be changed to $80. And then I would also add a provision indicating that the license fee for uh, dogs and cats uh, unaltered would be $40 and $10 for altered and that simplifies the process. That's, that's the presentation. If anyone has any questions, I'll be happy to answer them or motion of ours I think has a question for you. I have a couple. I can't remember if we probably asked this before. Uh, you said like vaccinations that are appropriate or something and some like the rabies is every three years right so would you pick them up every three I mean would they get the no. one-time rabies and never again is that how that would yeah. work so then like the leukemia vaccine vaccination I think is like what every so many years too so you would only do everything one time and that would be the end of it okay and then I had another question um which I can't remember what it is right now, but it'll pop in my head later and I'll just ask. So. Okay. Okay, any other questions from the commission? Ms. Rich? I think I remember, but when they when they pick these cats up, the feral cats, and, and do these <coughs> do this to them so that the population will decline, um, who, who pays for that? Uh, the Humane Society is the group that's running the program, so they're the group that pays for it. I thought that was it. Just yeah. want to make sure. Right. Thank you. And, and I think the hope is that there will be some savings actually recognized by the Humane Society because over time they'll be having to deal with fewer animals at the shelter than they currently deal with. Got it. Thank you. Any others? I just have one. <clears throat> I think I understand just the last part when they added provision for the license fee. So we have to make some real changes on the example, example you gave us, uh, just said a pickup fee. So this would be really breaking out what the pickup fee is. Well, what I'll have to do, Commissioner, is I'll have to add a, uh, you'll, you'll see that we're amending uh, section 90.23, mm -hmm. section 90.24, and section 90.25, right. and I'm going to have to actually add a section 90.20, which is the license uh, fee section of that chapter of the ordinances, and that will deal with the uh, simplifying the license fee, so it's, it's a uh, Ten dollars and uh, forty dollars, <coughs> rather than having several different variations. Apparently, uh, the microchip uh, option is not being used as much, and there are some things that may be uh, rendering using microchips uh, kind of uh, passe. For instance, that I, from my understanding, you might be able to put some kind of uh, of. Uh, oh, you might be able to uh, put some type of application on your smartphone to keep, to, you know, so you know, everything becomes outmoded so quickly. It looks like the microchip might be going the way of the dodo bird. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay, commissioners, any other? 
right. Next item, Riverview Park plan. <coughs> Who's going to do that one? This is going to be very brief. Uh, we're just in the original planning stages with the Tourism Commission. We had a meeting Monday, and this is just kind of a quick, uh, not to scale, it's just a drawing of the components that we discussed, potential components. And it's uh, we are going to uh, put this on a, a, a board, like a uh, conceptual board, and start working on pricing and all that stuff and everything. Right now, it's not... Uh, it's not uh, any fee to the city at all. But uh, the committee has narrowed down. I know we've talked about this quite some time, but uh, we've narrowed down to a, uh, if you look on your on your map, the parking is where, that's the trail, and the Douglas, Douglas wheel is at that end. And at the other end is where the uh, old Mr. Gaddy's and their lot. And the diagonal line going across is where tourism's property starts. So there would just be parking, there would be a river themed playground and a small splash pad river themed there and uh, one thing the committee did discuss, well we'd, we'd like to have bike rentals and uh, children's bank fishing down down there and it would tie the trail in and then one deal we talked about was something similar that Lexington has in front of uh, Rupp Arena is the uh, winter ice skating rink to bring people downtown to ice skate. It's a rental agency and try to get someone to uh, sponsor that and they bring it in and set it up and, and use it for a month or five weeks and then they tear it down. It's a, it would be done done in that fashion, nothing permanent, just a, a winter rental. But same situation you have in front of Rupp Arena in Lexington. So that's what, what the committee that? talked about. Kids. Bank fishing. How, do you know how many yards this is from like here back to where this would be? How many yards? About uh, just approximately. It's about four and a half, uh, between yeah, four and five so. acres. I don't know the yardage. Do you? I mean, I've got a pot. Yeah, we've got it. We've got it measured on it. It's been, we've had a survey. Done. I'm just thinking this would be really neat if it could be like, you know, really kind of big. Yeah. You know, yeah. like maybe even take it back a little more. So I was wondering sure. just well, how many yards were there. I, I freehanded that at three o'clock, so we, no, we no, could make it. Any. I like it. <laughs> that a.m. or p.m. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, p.m. after yeah. our last meeting. But actually, uh. Uh, yeah, we can. When we get into the design, it could be, you know. And, and I'll help you design it. I, 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 I hope you do. But that could bring a lot of people downtown for the Christmas season yeah. and mm -hmm. and stuff and all that. And we give you seats uh, both the summer and the winter. Land water conservation funding's coming up in the month of April, and uh, we're we're putting together a comprehensive plan with definitive numbers and a and a, a mode of uh, financial responsibility. So that's where we stand right now. And it's just a brief presentation to let you know we are working with tourism and riverfront development. And that's where we stand. I like it. Thank you for the update. I appreciate your drawing. It kind of makes me feel at home. Well, uh, sometimes, sometimes, <laughs> I didn't want to put stick men on their skating or something. But, uh, but sometimes, a, sometimes a visual helps. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, ah, good. Uh, next item. Highway 127 sewer extension. Bill Scalp will do that. Our wastewater treatment plant director. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You know me. Uh, uh, I never talk much. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. In, um, in 2004, the uh, Franklin County created the Farndale Sanitation District. And this area right through here is their boundaries. And so what we're talking about is essentially sewering 127 South towards uh, Anderson County and Lawrenceburg. Our, this, this comes straight from their facilities plan. This is our facilities plan area up here. There is a small area south of 64 right here, which we already have sewers, which is obviously still in our facilities plan area. Currently, Farmdale Sanitation owns about approximately just a little over uh, eight acres. It's three quarters of a mile south of Evergreen Road. And to date, they've received two grants. 
um, that have been used to purchase the property and hire the engineer. The total amount of the grants is about a little over $1.5 million. Um, they have the property, they have the engineer, and that's about as far as it's gone to date. <coughs> Excuse me. The property is, is a, this little area right here. This is Evergreen 127, and there's a little triangle right there, and that's the property they own. And the intent of that property, per the latest plan, is construction of a small uh, wastewater treatment plant. Bill, how long have they been working on this? Since 2004. That's what I thought. I just wanted to double check that. Thank you. Actually, the, uh, the facilities plan was approved in 2008. Uh, it took them a while to write their facilities plan and do some of the other stuff, so it's, it's been in the works for a while. Thank you. And this is a very busy drawing, <coughs> which you probably can't tell much of, but this is 127 going down through here. Down here is, is where the plant is located. And what you see here is a number of different uh, tabs that show there are 10 package plants down there that are going to be taken offline as part of this project. But the main thing is this right here is the area that the sewers are get, being constructed in. Um, and, and one of the things that's been discussed is, you know, along 127, well, as you can tell, there is, there is some distance between the existing sewers and 127. Obviously, sewers will be a lot closer than they are today up here, but uh, this does not construct sewers along 127. It takes sewers down the 127 corridor. And these are the five options that were looked at in the uh, facilities plan. Uh, option one is to pump it to us, to build an actual <coughs> pump station. Uh, they looked at pumping it to Lawrenceburg, uh, and then option three, uh, which is the new wastewater treatment plant, has three options. One they looked at was FSD to own, and FSD, that's the Frankfurt Sewer Department, is to own and operate. Uh, one is for Farmdale uh, themselves to own and operate, and the third, which is 3C, is for Farmdale to own and contract FSD to operate. And that's it. I'll answer any questions anybody's got. So, <clears throat> pump it to Lawrenceburg, pump it to us. They own and operate, we own and operate, or they own it and we operate it. Is that right? I can't no. see. Okay. You got two of them. Oh, I can't see that either. You got two of them here cheaper. Pardon? You got two of them here that are cheaper. So, are you, are you looking to do it the cheapest route? Or? Well, since the, since the facilities plan was... Uh, approved by the Division of Water. There have been some discussion um, several weeks ago, actually I guess it's probably been closer to, no, it's probably been two months ago, back in December we were contracted by HMB, who is their engineer. Uh, they have looked at some things. Option yes. one, which was to pump the FSD, they were looking, that when that was done, they were looking to pump it all the way to our plant. Okay, obviously there is shorter places they could dump. So one of the things they've looked at is to <laughs> modify option one to stop the force made short of our plant. However, what they haven't looked at is possible capacity issues that we might have from that location to our plant. That's not even been discussed at this point. So obviously, there, that I, I can assure you, if they if they stop it somewhere just across the interstate or whatever, there will be some areas that we're going to have capacity issues, and those will have to be looked at. And then, you know, who pays the cost of the capacity upgrade? That's all got to be part of that discussion. How much is um, our our current cost per thousand ga gallons? We got eleven dollars and ninety six cents is the low one here. Our current? Yes, sir. Nine thirty-nine, I think. I'm doing it off the top of my head, yes, but it's somewhere in that neighborhood. How how amiable are they toward any of these options? We don't really know. We're just sort we of not, starting. They uh, we have we have been asked to participate <clears throat> in a meeting with them. Um, 
sometime probably late this month, next month, don't know a date yet. Uh, they would like to open up some conversations again. You know, the last true conversations we had was probably six years ago when the facilities plan was done, and it's just been kind of sitting on the burner and boiling or simmering but not boiling. So what's the next step? To meet with them and see what their plans are. Uh, do they have a do they have a new plan? Do they have a modified plan from one of these? Um, we just don't know at this point. Okay. Any further? Thanks, Bill. Thank you very much. We will wait until we, we hear back from you. <laughs> Who's going to do the ambulance billing, Chief Sloan? About two or three years ago, or two years ago, we switched to ambulance billing companies. The old ambulance billing company, we had a few concerns and we kind of transitioned away from it. It probably wasn't the best split that ever, when we, when we broke away from the ambulance uh, billing company that we were using before. To, to bill for our EMS runs. And so at that time, we thought we had a process that would bill out the runs that remained with the old billing company and the new billing company would only bill out runs occurring from July 1st, 2013 forward. About six months later, the old billing company called and said, we're done, it's not profitable for us. We would like to move, you, you need to do something, decide what you want to do. So at that time, we decided to go with Revenue Recovery, which is the collections company which also has, that we use, and it's, they also have a medical billing division. They do typical first line billing, so it's not really collections at that point. So we put together a contract, we shifted all of that bill, the, the uh, left billing to revenue recovery at that time. We thought it should be a really smooth process. <laughs> it hasn't been smooth at all. It, uh, <laughs> what we found was that uh, uh, there, were, there were a large number of, of accounts out there that had never been billed due to either bad information, it was bad data. Typically what we found, the two scenarios that repeatedly come up. One number one, we picked someone up not at their home. It was a motor vehicle accident, they tripped on the sidewalk, they were at work. All of these different things that we did not go to their address and pick them up. So that kind of took away from some of the accuracy. The other thing that we commonly find is we actually went to their address and picked them up, they don't receive their mail there, they use a PO box. So uh, on some of these, when we would bill them out, it would go to a dead-end address. The billing company never really either caught on to it or worked them with the, uh, to the level that I think they probably should have worked them. So now the, this, the uh, I'll call it statute limitation, whatever, the, the billable period for the, the insurance company has expired. So we're, we're getting these calls and for whatever reason, it looks like every month they put a few more of these into the collections part of it. And they come back and they say, so I, you know, I'm getting, the last couple of days I've gotten a whole bunch more calls. They'll dial for around the 15. So folks get their collections notes. They say, look, I never got a bill back in 2012. And uh, I've already talked to Humana, which I no longer have. I have Anthem before they had Humana. And they're not going to pay. They would have paid this account had it been done in the first year. But I don't feel like I should pay. I never got a bill. Uh, Humana was never billed. I've checked with Humana, and so far I've proved no one wrong. I think that everyone that's told me that has, has said that factually, that they probably never got a bill, and that the insurance company at the time was never billed. So now we come forward, they have no insurance. It's two and a half years after the fact. Three, it, they run from about 2011 to 12, is, uh, mid-12 is really the busy period that we find that we had these problems. And so, uh, I don't have the information. This was something we contracted out. We thought we were doing a good job contracting out, having someone that could do it more efficient than we could because they knew about billing. They knew all the codes, all the Medicare, all the Medicaid changes. And so we, we pushed it out. We had, an, we had a very good method in place to make sure that all the money that came in came to us. There's no money unaccounted for. The problem is is sometimes they didn't work the, work the accounts maybe the way they should have. That's my belief is perhaps they didn't work the accounts the way they should have. So. I, I'm, I'm ran over by phone calls that say I don't want to deal with revenue recovery. 
I want to deal with you, or I've, I've contacted someone on the commission and they've told me to deal with you, or I've called the front desk of City Hall and I've, I've been told to deal with you. And so, as I deal with them, I, I see that I do think there was probably some fault, if not by us, by our agent at the time, being SDI. And I've, put, I've got three recommendations. Number one is look for anything prior to uh, July 1st, 2013, that someone's willing to put in a statement, however, you know, however, this says, I never got a bill, my insurance company was never billed, and I want you to write this off, and we, and we, we write it off. Number two, picking a number out, out of the air, we used 80-20, thinking that most insurance, you know, 80-20 is a, is a rule of thumb for Medicare, it's a rule of thumb for some Humana plans, it wasn't all Humana plans at the time, but that, that's our two biggest uh, insurance that we, that we were collecting from from the time. Do 80-20, say, look, we'll settle for you today, 20% of your, of your debt. For the typical person, you're probably talking, or for the typical patient, you're probably talking about $275 is what, <coughs> what they would settle for uh, if, if we were to do 80-20. The other is say you received the service, sorry you didn't receive a bill, and, that's, and, and, and we're going to move ahead with this. We have some that are now making it to the, you know, they're making it to the, uh, to the court levels. And, and, and so uh, I will go the direction you want me to go. So option three is? You, you have the service, you pay the bill. Okay. You, gotta, you know, whether you got the bill or not, you received the service, and, and perhaps you should have called and asked why they did not get a bill or whatever. Some of these I do understand. I am empathetic to some. They say, look, you picked me up. Before I left the hospital, I saw about five different doctors. They shipped me on to UK or they shipped me on to Central Baptist. I had cardiac surgery. If you only saw the stack of EOBs that I had, that ambulance bill wasn't one that I really thought about. That I had a, others, maybe not so innocent. But uh, that's kind of where we're at. I, we talked about it about a year ago, and you gave us some direction at that time. You gave me a little leeway to, to deal with these. But I think this time I throw the red flag back up and say, this isn't the number that we talked about. This isn't the occasional run that was coming before me a year or so ago that is at a much higher pace and a much more rapid pace and and we've taken a much and these aren't just individuals that find themselves in collections they're actually going to courts or we're getting letters to uh, uh, call Miss Jump and and, and to uh, deal with her so that's where I'm at I'll take the direction you want me to take but I think that you should know about it that I shouldn't put this on autopilot and let it work its way out do you have any thoughts chief on what you think would be <clears throat> the best approach you know, I've talked to uh, uh, some people are just mad, and that's all we want to be is mad when they call. But when I when I when I get the and, and I've had some very good conversations with some, and so I, I've ran by them as a test group. I say, look, we're we're in this. I, I'm going to be presenting this to the city commission. <coughs> what do you think about eighty twenty? And then I, each time I explain to them, I'd like for you to look at it from our point of view. If your electric, if the mailman doesn't put your electric bill in your in your box that doesn't keep the electric company from turning your power off. But if we could work at 80-20, would you, would you be willing to pay 20%? And at this point, those that are not just so mad that they're, you know, willing to listen at all, everyone says, you know what, that sounds fair. Probably I could have done more, you could have done more, but if we can get it to 80-20 and this will go away, I'm willing to work <coughs> at that. Some are still not going to be happy. I mean that's 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 the obvious thing. Well, so do we know how many there are? Uh, <laughs> no, because they come on in. Some there some folks don't know about about this until they go to buy a car, they go to buy a house or whatever, and they run a credit report. Yeah. And so they can't you know you have you have a credit report out there. So we don't even know about some until they they <laughs> pop up. But I would say that right now we're averaging five to seven calls per week, and. Uh, uh, <laughs> I would say it's about 20, I'm guessing, I'm guessing 20% of those that went to collections between 2011 and 2013, I'm thinking <coughs> the number's probably about 20% of those that ended in collections. Okay. And that's probably, on an average year, we probably have uh, uh, 15 to 1,800 gold collections. Not all of them for large sums, a lot of them are for $30, $30 but um, they do go to collections, so. So I, with that, four to eight hundred. That's that's a broad range, I know, and that could be totally right. You said four to eight hundred. That's correct. I could serve. Them. 
Great question, Rich. A couple of quick things. Mm -hmm. I deal with collections also, and it is a trying exercise. Um, what what steps are you now taking with the new firm so that we don't get messed up again? Okay. Uh, a couple of things that we're doing with the new. Number one is the day, well, first of all, the, what's coming on board, I hope to be the biggest, and we've worked on it for over a year, but we've partnership with the hospital, that the most accurate, you know, we're picking folks up not the best time, and they a lot of times don't have a purse with them or, or whatever, so we see them for 20, 30 <coughs> minutes, we see them no more, and it's really inaccurate information or a bad time to get the information, so we're on the back end of billing. We've worked with the hospital so that uh, I think coming online February 13th that uh, we've done all the agreements that three days after the fact that the billing company can um, go in via portal or whatever and compare this information that the patient is now accurate. That's kind of where the hospital thinks their information is accurate three days after the fact. So uh, number one, that's that's that will be huge if we can do so. Mm -hmm. The other thing is, from the time the ambulance bill goes in, if they have one ding back to them or whatever the case may be, they run it against three or four different uh, I don't know, databases of whatever, I don't know what the names of them are, but they, it's skip tracing, doing all that type of stuff to try to make sure that that person's uh, done, doing so. Then I also have a portal now, which we didn't have before, I didn't have the ability, or uh, Chief Possage didn't have the ability to actually get in and look at the, the Part of the reason that we switch billing companies, we can look at what's going on. So when, when we have a batch go to collections, I have the ability to look at collections. So you have online ability on I time. I do, but I still time. can't tell you that all those that go to collections, that I know why they went to collections, but a lot of them I can see that there's a, I think, from what I've dealt with, and again, I'm guessing at the numbers, that when I look at them, I see that there's some activity that, that maybe some part of the bill's been paid. So at least I know that perhaps Medicare paid a portion of it. Now, this individual over here may not be willing to pay the rest of it, but I, that makes me think that we've got the right patient, the right bill, the right address, the right social security number, the right birthday. All this went together, so I'm seeing a lot less of those that are for the full amount. And so when I see that, that leads me to believe, leads the uh, uh, billing company to believe that there's some activity, and in fact, this bill isn't going on notice. What, what percentage are we collecting? so far? We're at about 25%, uh, but the 25% includes the write-offs of contracting with, with uh, uh, you know, if you, if you send somebody a bill. We send Medicaid a bill for, for $1,000. Medicaid sends us back a check for $175 and says, you're done, be happy. That's all we, you know, that's what you get. You can't balance. So what's our overall percentage we're getting each year of our costs? Of our Cost you used to you told me one time it was like fifty five to sixty five percent. In the last calendar year, I'm, I'm talking about data that figured finished out January thirty first. It was one point six eight million dollars. It was our income that came back in. Now during that same time, we wrote off or adjusted four hundred and seventy or four point seven million dollars. But some of that again is dealing with you know that's a large percentage of, of the Medicaid and Medicare. Or Medicaid, especially, there's no balance billing. So if you contract with, or if you take Medicaid, you either take what they send you, or you just. So how much do we lose on every Medicaid run? Oh uh, well, we're, we're <laughs> some figures I put together today in trying to uh, take a, take an educated guess on this. I think that the average ambulance run cost probably, you know, if if, if uh, our deficit. Let me rephrase that. Our deficit is about two hundred seventy dollars. That we that on every annual run. That's the deficit that you run in the run in the red. So uh, if you take out full operation costs, not just the deficit, well, that's probably someplace around half again. So it's about four fifty runs, probably what we have in a typical run, and then they'll probably send us about one seventy five. Okay. I'm almost done. I know we're a little off. Um, and then I think you told me one time our <coughs> runs have doubled in the last 10 years, even though our population hadn't gone up. Our runs have uh, just under doubled. Well, let's say the last 15 years, okay. our runs have just doubled, and our population really it's hasn't about changed. But we're older. We're getting older. Mm -hmm. We're older, and there's a, there's a years, tremendous right. amount of abuse That's the problem. for the ER yeah, that's and exactly. for the ambulance. That's the problem. That's exactly Last question. 
let's say I'm Joe Smith and I call, get an, I think I know the answer, and I get an ambulance run. My bill's two hundred forty dollars. I don't pay it. Joe calls again next week, two forty. I don't pay it. We never stop service, do we? We never stop service. So Joe can use us indefinitely for free. That's correct. Okay, I, got I guess it. that's something somewhat like if Chief Abrams gives someone a speeding ticket and they don't pay the ticket, he gives them a ticket next week also. <laughs> I, I tend to think that's, tend to think that's different. <laughs> no, but I appreciate that. No. I appreciate that comparison. But I think it's different. I understand. <laughs> so, so does this company have any legal liability that has messed this up? You know, uh, we've, uh, Mr. Moore, and we, we we've discussed this somewhat. I I think that. At the end of the day, that that it, as bad as I hate giving you this answer, answer that's probably if there is, it's probably more trouble than it's worth. Okay. So you like eighty twenty? I, I think yeah. eighty twenty is a. I'm fine with that. Yeah. Is everybody okay with that? Or do you have to come okay with that? If we're talking about annuals, Bill, could I have one thing? To say? Sure. <coughs> I would just like to. Uh, one of the things that I've, I've mm -hmm. talked to the uh, billing company a couple, three times that uh, uh, that's changed is, as everyone knows, a big part of what we do is Humana. Well, so, or, no, a big part of what we've done for the non-Medicare, non-Medicaid was Humana because of the retirees and because of the state workers. Well, that changed on January 1. And so, it would not surprise me that if we saw a decline as a result of that change. We were contracted with Anthem. Anthem when you contract with them, we get back into, we're going to bill, we'll bill and you give us what you want to give us. The problem with Anthem is we could break the contract, not contract with them, but then Anthem sends the check to the patient. So if I pick up John Doe and, and we bill him a thousand dollars, and they say we'll pay a thousand dollars, but they send that check to John Doe if you're not contracted. That appears to be their way of making sure that we contract with them because who wants that bill to go to the patient as opposed to us and then be his response, his or her responsibility to get it on to us. So we then give them a set, so they're able to get a set price from us lower than the thousand dollars. To make sure the check comes directly to us. Now I spoke to the fire chief and or the EMS chief in Columbus, Ohio, and uh, they're a large anthem and I, they're undecided, but when I talk to the billing company that does their billing, uh, they said we're working with Columbus every day trying to get them to go ahead and take the contract. They said it is a large percentage of folks that get that check, they take that check, they cash it, and we're, we're left out in the cold. Mm -hmm. So I, I just want to put that on the radar that, it, that I think that will, uh, of a major carrier here in town, that uh, it, it, it's a, uh, we've got quite a few. So, any, okay, any other questions? Thank you, Chief, so much. <coughs> Hope that gets worked out quickly. Next item is stormwater program. Oh, <clears throat> Thank you, Mayor. Uh, last week when he met, or when you guys met, uh, Tom made a presentation about uh, stormwater and how he gave us several options, maybe four or five different options of ways to pay for stormwater. And one of those options was uh, through the general fund, and that's what I wanted to just expand a little bit on that discussion from uh, last week. Uh, and if you've got uh, some materials that I ha uh, that we hand out in the <coughs> box. I think everybody's got that. Uh, if you look at the first page, and I'm just going to uh, give you an overview quickly. Uh, the first page basically talks about uh, uh, reserve, how much we, we have on reserve at the end of the last fiscal year and how much we are projected to have at the end of this fiscal year. If you would, on uh, number five and six, just change that date to 2015 instead of 16. That should be 215 instead of 16. <clears throat> so that's the first page. Uh, the second page gives you an overview of uh, loans. If we were able to, uh, if a loan is available through Kentucky Infrastructure, what the rates might be for that, and the two uh, rates that I'm hearing right now, uh, possibly a 1.75 for 20 years or a 2.75, depending how we apply for that loan. So, if you're looking at a payment on a million dollar loan, of 60 to 65 thousand dollars a year. Annually. That's the second page. 
third page is basically uh, the, the, the lease expenses that's going to roll off our books over the next uh, four or five years. And if you look at the second block, uh, lines 12 through 18, you can see uh, that third column out there tells you how much uh, how much lease expense is going to roll off the books for those years. For example, 2016-17, we got $137,000 worth of expense that's going to leave the books as a result of paying off some of these uh, leases that we have in play right now. And then it'll tell you, it tells you what leases are rolling off the books and the notes out to the side. So just that's how this is set up. Again, I'm going to go back to the first page after going through the uh, just kind of what I gave you. <coughs> and basically what I've... Steve, can you tell me, you said on page one you had changed something and I was... Still yeah, uh, on five and days. six there, okay. uh, those those two dates on there should be six, oh. 15 instead of 16. Oh, okay. Sorry for the confusion on no, that. No, no, that's fine. <coughs> but what I've done here, what I've tried to uh, show you that... It looks like right now, just looking at where we are today, where we ended last year, that we're, we'll have about a million dollars worth of reserve that we can do a project out of for uh, the, the physical year ended 630 uh, 2015. So it looks like that's a strong possibility that we'll have a million dollars left. We can either do a project or we can do some combination. If, if Tom, for example, needs some maintenance money, you know, he can use a portion of that for maintenance, a portion of that for project. However, uh, you know, the, the, he's deemed uh, fit on that. And then looking forward, uh, number two note there, I've got written down uh, this KIA infrastructure, the second page there. You know, we've got a lot of lease expense rolling off the books, uh, about $400,000 over the next three years. You know, we could use some of that money if we decide to go, if we were able to go get uh, some kit money, you know, we could, we could possibly do that and possibly use some of that money for, uh, for maintenance as well. That's a possibility. I, I will say that this just tightens things up significantly. Um, no, but I know you, you folks know that, so that's all I have. Any questions? <coughs> we got one. Go one. Does this count as a dedicated revenue stream? By saying, I know it's general fund, <coughs> and I know the requirement is it has to be a dedicated revenue stream. It's, My understanding is if you say we're going to pay this much money, and where it's coming from, that's okay. what they that's consider dedicated. Okay. And with one other question, and I think I read it in this packet. <coughs> Um, I guess it was the five year. Yes. Right. <clears throat> what I do you want me to talk about that? Sure. What I did is I went to the EPA's uh, packet that I gave a copy uh, to you all, and I looked at things <coughs> that they require that we are currently not doing, and I tried to come up with a cost of what it would be to have us be in the in the compliance there. It does not include what the state's going to pile on top of that. There are new permits going to come out in the next couple of weeks. This is just an idea of what I think it's going to take. This would be maintenance yearly, not um, including any capital improvement projects. This would be this is, this is the cost annually? Yes. I think. Additionally. What you estimate? Yes. So if you ask the question uh, and you had the million dollars, your costs would be taken care of for three years. If that's how you all want to pursue it. That doesn't leave any... Huh? That include that, yeah, I was going to say that doesn't include any, any projects, any capital projects. And that's one of the things I, I didn't see kind of being understood in our other meetings before is that there are two different sizes. There's an there's a annual cost to do the MS4 program, and then there's a cost to do any capital improvement projects. They are separate. Um, so as long as we everyone understands what's being set aside for what. 
I think I understood. Okay. I I think that has the number changed, but that it's going to call that if you let's just say for example you <coughs> bonded. I'm not saying we should do that, but let's just say for example that you bonded a five or six or seven million dollars or whatever. And you're also going to have those maintenance costs. I think at one time we were given a number of eight hundred eighty-nine thousand between that around that number. If you were not using a fee, because you wouldn't have the cost to to generate the fee. So what what Steve has proposed is the use of a million dollars over the next two years budget. Correct. So if it, it appears to me that, that that would allow some, for some capital projects, it wouldn't allow for as much, and it may be that we need to find more money than a million dollars. Yeah, have I missed something? You're, if I, just, can I understand what you're saying? You're yeah. saying the million dollars would be two years at roughly 300 or close to 300,000 a year for the maintenance part. Which is six hundred thousand, and that would leave the four hundred thousand mm -hmm. for. That's right. That's right. Okay. And if that's not enough, might we can find some more money. Okay. So we can take care of all of the maintenance, plus we can do two hundred thousand dollars worth of projects every year. For two years. Mm -hmm. For two years. For every year. Is that like? Is that like? Four hundred thousand. I mean, do you have any idea what the those capital costs would be, or is that just something we just have no idea? About? Chris, what a number of them. He's gave it. He's given. Yeah, us we this. we've got some rough yeah. estimates of what we think different projects are going to cost. Okay. But to give you an example, the Crestwood project was right at a million. Okay. <clears throat> but I definitely think this is the um, better start. <clears throat> because um, there's no building, no collection involved. And um, we, we've heard nightmare stories about that part of it. The only part I'm a little concerned about, uh, I think I read in here, said we would have to have a long-term commitment to this if we go this way. And I don't really see it that way. I see this as a commitment for about five years. And, you know, you, you always tweak things. You see, I think, like Commissioner Roach just mentioned, if there's more money somewhere else, you know, we continue or I do different things. We can do both of those things. Yeah, I think you can change where you're dedicated. We can change the we source. Can change that. We can change that. What every you don't want to do is tell the state, I'm going to do this over the next five years, and then not have the money to fund what you tell them you're going to do. So, so, you, so we probably ought to aim for a, a modest goals. Yes. And then exceed them, maybe. Yeah. What do you mean by modest goals? Construction projects? Right. It, it may be that it, we, we ha may have to do modest capital projects, not to, not be able to do them all at once. I don't know. It, well, maybe you can find the money to bond it all and get them all done. The capital projects are not necessarily a mandate for the MS4 right, program. Right. That's so we don't the, have to do need. those. Yes. But, it is. but we want to do them anyway. We want to try to do as I want to try to do as many as we can afford. And you've given us a list previously of best estimates <coughs> of how many projects? There are there a list of about There's a five 15. on there that are stormwater directly, and then there's a list of probably seven that deal with uh, what the sewer department's going to be doing with their INI reduction. In our list of goals and objectives, we use the term purposefully having the greatest impact on removing storm water. To me, all five of us agreed that's number one, or the, with number ones. And I think the direction ought to be clear that your office ought to provide us with projects that we can meet with budget that have the greatest impact. Now, if that's a $200,000 project, if that's a $100,000 project, if that's a $300 project, you ought, to, you ought to list them. 
city manager wants to add something. Yeah. <laughs> One of the things we talked about at the staff level in our committee was the ability to bond, take advantage of um, the bond market, either geo bonds or the Kentucky Infrastructure Authority. Um, Mr. Scalp was saying that one time that if we were to combine a project with sanitary and storm, <coughs> we might be able to qualify for uh, the 1.75. So be great. if we could do a one or two, maybe a $3 million project, it is competitive. It's not guaranteed, but it's something we could certainly apply for. And I think the application is by October of this year. Uh, if we could do a larger project and spread that over 20 years, 20, 25 years, depending, I think between what Mr. Dawson has showed us with the reduction in the debt over the next 10 years and the priority projects that Mr. Bradley has put together for the commission, we can do both. I think if we you can. can allow, if that's the direction you're telling us to go, then if you would give our, the staff an opportunity, <coughs> to maybe develop, <coughs> excuse me, a long-term capital and a maintenance plan, at least five years. We could put something like that together for perhaps the next work session. If anybody object to that. We've been waiting no, too that's long. What, that's what we want to do. Too that's long. What, We've got to. Is there a way we could also look at some of those projects when we do street repairs and street cuts <coughs> with those projects that that <coughs> portion could be looked at to come out of municipal aid account? You cannot handle stormwater at a municipal aid. What about the repair of the street, though? <coughs> yes. The That's what I was part yes. of that, that yes. portion. Yes. <coughs> that would sort of leverage the other funds <coughs> that would go strictly for stormwater yes, sir. in the I&I &I and the um, wastewater projects. But because we had to cut into a street, uh, charge that to municipal aid account. We're doing that where we can now, anyway. Yeah. I think that's well taken, Mayor, because didn't you, you just had the project on uh, Wilkinson Street where you were able to do kind of two things at the same time, right? Well, actually, we didn't, we didn't pay for the repaving. That would be paid for by the gas company. The I'm talking about a Wilkinson uh, Boulevard that was just made anew. Oh, the, well, you yeah. know, all that was done by the transportation cabinet. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we have to do some but we took care of our storm water and our sewer issues, if the there, if there were any, <clears throat> the, the ones that we knew, we knew about. <laughs> I don't want to go there. <laughs> I sure live on Wilkinson Street, sure and I know how know I, I know how long that's. Been. You've had holes there and grates over the top of it. Well, I, th I think that's important to pour, important to point out on the goals. It says the, the projects that have the greatest impact, but those projects may be better served. In, in, an, in an analysis of it, if Bill's going to be in an area in three years, it only makes Damn. sense. Yeah, to work. and we want that. Of the commission has said that. We, we are, of course. I, I just want to make sure that we're all You're on the same. Right. And, yeah. and, and I think we, we need to, you know, I know these numbers make people nervous and where we're going to find money, et cetera, but it's not like the sky's falling. A million dollars at 1.75% is $59,000 a year. That's not any money. When the public safety building is paid off, for nine hundred and seventy some odd thousand dollars, almost a million dollars a year, is freed up. We've got. I think we're going to be fine, provided we're prudent. If we're not prudent, we won't be fine. But we wouldn't be fine anyway if we weren't prudent. So I, I'm with everybody else, and let's yeah. roll on. Oh, we already missed that. That was at the first. I don't know if you were here. Maybe you came in right afterwards. Um, commission, we could return to citizen comments if there's no objection. Or could like we just ask a, a citizen what they sure. think about something? So can you tell us what you think about this? <laughs> <laughs> uh, my name is Chris Schimler, and I really appreciate you guys talking about this issue. It's a hard one, and as a resident of the county, you know, I'm concerned that when it rains that I know that sewage is ending up in inappropriate places and it's a danger to everybody and it's not good for, for anybody and, and I, I, just, I appreciate what you're doing and what I see is that we're you know scrimping and looking for money and a means to deal with these problems and I guess I and I and I haven't been here at previous meetings I'm a fairly new student to this but what I do see is there's a lot of paved land contributing to stormwater flow off from the state and from non-tax 
taxable entities, and I think that um, that while we're trying hard at this level to come up with the money, it seems only fair to ask everybody to pay their fair share. My understanding is that a stormwater utility would, would do that, and I just wondered why that seems to be off of the table. <coughs> well, I think it was decided by the commission the majority thought that it was better to try to look at ways to fund the stormwater program without having to put on a new fee. And that's and that's what we're looking at now, trying to get information to compare the cost of doing the projects through general fund appropriation. And if that, over a five-year period, we're kind of looking at a five-year period now and also looking at longer, but I'm going to weigh those options to see if we can do it <coughs> through general fund appropriations without having to put any more additional fees on the public. We haven't really determined whether or not the state was going to participate willingly or, or not on the uh, contribution from state-owned properties. That's kind of a real short version. That's right. Okay, anything else? Okay. And we'll get, if you have other questions, you can ask us. Okay, that's quick. Uh, next item is going to be our goal. So, <coughs> my It's funny because here. sometimes I get things in my box. I didn't have the, the animal control ordinance, but I did get this. And I don't know, sometimes I'm still not getting things. Well, I put my thing for you on your Yours is in there. So anyway, uh, who's going to start this? Okay, this is our latest edition. Yes. Okay. You know, Alex is wanting to do two or three more. Oh, come so on. she is waiting for no. change, more changes. No more changes. No, please. <laughs> Somebody can't. I'm going to grab my phone. Okay. So what's the email you sent? Let's go on. Yeah. Yeah. That was the one that took the most recent one should be the one that I put in the door last. The the top there portion, was a couple of changes, so I think I pulled yours out. Right. 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 Number one goal that we go ahead and start implementing those immediately. I don't want to wait. I don't think you want to wait until, you know, July 1st. Those that have an imminent economic impact, the finance department with the department head These would are the bring back ones? a cost. Mm -hmm. And then we would see if we could do it. That one's been there today. Let me see that one. The, uh, the, the, the second I think the only reason this That's the one I picked up today. The second the only reason Hello? I have a gavel that's telling oh, you all to stop oh, the bus. Yeah. That's correct. Oh, that's correct. Can't wait to get this table. Yeah. Seven, okay. I, eight, nine. I, we have the ability at this session, I believe, to make decisions. Yes. And so I, I, I move that we adopt the goals. I also move that we follow the advice that Commissioner Sauer said about implementation of the goals. And the only caveat I would add would be that, you know, if you, if you run across one of these that you think can't wait, you can do what I always do and bring it up under older new business. So, uh, but I think we need to go ahead and roll on it. I know the city manager's already started on some of them, but I think Mr. Sire had a good idea and let's roll on. Can I ask a question? Of course. Okay, did we ever decide, how did we, I don't ever remember establishing a cutoff for remove or keep, so how did we do that? In that uh, email that I sent to uh, the board, uh, what it basically said as you look at your sheet, uh, all those ranked 1, 1 1.2, 1.25. Up to 1.25. Yes. Okay. Right there would be the cutoff. That's fine. Because just... all of those have number one uh, ones in them. Right. So, uh, some may have a, a, a need more information. I think one commissioner, you know, or two had need more information, but at least had four ones. And in the communique, it said we ought to implement those that don't have any economic impact First. immediately. Mm -hmm. Immediately. Those in the top tier that have an economic impact, we left it to the finance department and department heads to come back to us as soon as possible mm -hmm. with a cost. The second tier 
would also be listed uh, in the budget for uh, the goals in order by department like we all talked about and those would have an economic impact stated by the finance department department heads and we would know going in and that would help create help create our budget for the coming year those that are 1.8 and higher we'd need to explore some more information you know those were the ones that had twos and threes in them, and uh, we need to look at those a little more in the future. Okay. And I just realized too. I apologize. You, you made a motion. I second. You second. I'm second now. So it's second by, made by Commissioner Rose, second by Commissioner Haynes. Now, we, do you want to have a more discussion? And the reason we can take action is we said in the call that action may be taken. So. Discussion. Well, just a one discussion. I'm glad you clarified that because I, I didn't get a chance to look at that one. But the only question I was looking at, I was trying to figure out if number ones are ones we can do quickly, mm -hmm. or number ones are ones just because they're more important. Well, uh, and some of them might have a little bit of. Yeah, I, I clarified, right. you know, in that statement to you right. uh, that those that didn't have any economic, economic impact, impact, we could go ahead and plan for right, right now and try <coughs> to implement right now because it had the vast majority of the commission support. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And number two, if they did have an economic impact, we need to find out about it, mm -hmm. and the staff will bring back a cost to us, and then we can vote on implementing it or not. I agree with you. Okay. So um, I think what we need to do, because a lot of this discussion took place outside of here, at some point, as I stated in the last meeting, we need to make it a matter of the public record here what those goals are. Are you going to give that to the press and is the press then going to put that in the paper so the public knows what's on these pages? Is that how that's going to work? Um, <laughs> or are we going to go through it's and read? Records. I know it is, but are we going to go through and read this or what? I mean, I guess my point, is, my point is, my point is, you know, I, I don't remember us talking about cutoffs or whatever. I'm fine with that, but I just want to reiterate, I, I think it's highly important that we Make those decisions as a group and not in private emails. And well, I know we just those, made the decision. I know we did. You all evidently set a cutoff score, <clears throat> and that's fine. I like the cutoff score being where it is, um, but which is what we're talking about. I now. learned the cutoff score now, so we're asking for a motion, and so I'm fine with it, except that uh, I would like to know. You know, I don't want to be the commissioner that doesn't get a vote on anything because I don't do my votes over email. That's my point. We didn't vote over okay. email. It was, a, it was an FYI sent out. Okay, that's fine. Uh, I think that the commission has to vote on that cutoff, actually. But I'm fine with the cutoff at 1.75. I think I actually recommended 1.5 over in the last meeting. Um, that's fine. Both of you, uh, did you get the motion? Do you want to clarify anything in the motion? Do you want to clarify, Commissioner? Do you want to? I think it's. I think I'm fine with it. it. It's okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but I just want to be sure. Yeah, I just want to make sure that we all remember that <coughs> there are five votes here, and that we don't just put something out there and that's the way it is before it gets talked about here. Yeah. And um, I like your idea. That's fine. Um, I like the cutoff. It's a little bit higher than what I said, but I'm fine with it. Yeah. But I just okay. want to reiterate well, that. Get the cutoff in the motion. Yeah. Because if you well, want me to include that or reword well, it, oh, that, that, that would be Commissioner Roach's the way he made that motion. <coughs> if he wants to reword it, I can rewrite re it. I think re the cutoff it. is important because uh, you know you have to segment. You have to, you know, uh, you can't do them all. <laughs> That's right. We can try, but we well, I'm the one that said we need a cutoff, and and I think across the hall I said we need to determine what that cutoff is. And so I, I guess cut off you mean segmenting this. Yeah, I, I guess okay. my point is some people are used to doing all of that conversation over email and that's just not the way I think it needs to be done. Um, but it's just for information, it's not for a right. vote. Okay, I mean, then I make the motion I make the motion then that the cutoff be no, one point seven five. You want is that a, a motion to amend uh, do you want to amend it or do you want to withdraw the original? Well, if that's in the motion, that's fine. It wasn't. Okay, it needs to be somewhere. Okay, so you want to make it a motion to uh, amend the original motion to include a cutoff 
number of what? I think that we heard 1.75. 1.75? Okay. Well, it was, the, the motion was lower than 1.75. 1.75 separates the goals yes. we're going to do right away from those we'll further two, explore. Me, they had two cut I'm making one at 1.25 and one at 1.75. Does anybody, can somebody, would you all second that? I, and then for discussion I, or just. I, I, trying to clarify? I don't think we ever clarified my motion, did we? No, but she has a motion. That's no, but I withdraw my motion so he can you do? make okay. his more Thank clear. You. I'll withdraw it. Thank you. Okay, go ahead. Well, I'm pretty confused, but I'll try. It's okay. Right, my motion is, is that we, um, Direct the city manager to, to immediately um, implement. implement those recommendations that have no financial impact that are what number? Uh, One, 1. 1.25 and, and below. Uh, and below. And below. Yes. Okay. 1.25 and below. Further, the, the finance director working with the department heads should estimates the financial impact of each item from what 1.4 to 1.75 yes and if there's no expense go ahead and take action and if there is bring those bring those to items to us to determine and I suggest that those items that are 1.8 to 2.4 Explore. We they postpone explore. consideration. Well, I like that explore word. We explore those items. Okay, so your original motion. If you would just withdraw your original motion and let that one be your main motion. I will. Okay. Oh, um, sure. So the motion that Commissioner Roach just made with the cutoffs in it and recommendations for exploration of the items above the cutoff number is the motion. I and second that one. Okay. Second by Commissioner Hayes. Now, is there any discussion? If not, clerk, please call the roll. Commissioner Haynes? Yes. Commissioner Sauer? Yes. Commissioner Roach? Yes. Commissioner Bauer? Yes. Mayor May? Yes, that is approved. And I went ahead and did a roll call on that just so we, later on we would, would, people would remember. Okay, so that was good and that's easy. Thank you all. Next item would be discussion of our tentative agenda for <coughs> February the February 23rd. <coughs> Does anyone have any questions on the tentative agenda? Next item would be <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I would ask for any staff reports that are relevant to the discussion items, including the goals. HR Director, no. Chief Director, Finance Director, Parks Director, Ms. Hall, if, Community if, Relations. If Mr. Bowers wants, we can get these on the website. I think that would be really good. There's been a lot of um, conversation alluding to goals that have never really been talked about a lot, and so I think that would be good to go with the cutoff scores you just heard and list those in that way. I mean, I don't know what anybody else thinks that's of it. Great. I think that's great. Thank you. <coughs> Mr. Moore? None. Clerk to see you. No, sir. Thank you. Wonderful. This is great. I move we adjourn. Second. 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 Second.